The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning. I'm here. With John Leonetti. That broadcast school has really paid off. Deacon Mark Campbell. Yeah! Mark Amadeo. Ooh, yeah! And Deacon Tony Valdez. Good morning, everyone. Welcome into One and All. Thanks for joining me today. It is Thursday, September 5th. Deacon Randy Keel coming up right around the corner. Going to talk about the first and or second reading for today. Uh, Father P.J. McManus is going to be on, Pastor of Christ the King uh, on the south side of Des Moines. Going to be on uh, to talk about the first, or excuse me, uh, we, we have two questions, only two this morning, including what was one of the most important church councils? He's going to talk about the uh, the church councils this morning and um, why they're important for us to be able to know. Uh, Grace Fry is going to be on at 745 today of Dowling Catholic uh, Spotlight today. I don't um, think she's the only one. That's it. No, I think her her uh, her 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 champion doubles partner is yeah. also joining her. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. Grace and Juju, both going to be in studio. Juju is going to be on. Okay. Yes, very Juju good. Tomorrow. Oh, very good. All right, we'll have them both on for the uh, Dowling Catholic Spotlight today at seven forty-five. Looking forward to that as well. All right, Deacon Tony. Let uh, wait. Deacon Tony's out. Still out. Deacon Mark. Still out with the uh, wounded ribs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deacon Mark's going to pray. Yeah, let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we offer you our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day and for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass said throughout the world for the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, the reunion of all Christians, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father this month. Amen. Amen. Back to Deacon Mark with your news. Thank you, John. News this morning brought to you by Fast Signs and Clive. Learn more at fastsigns.com. President Joe Biden is preparing to block a Japanese-based Nippon Steel's $14.9 billion purchase of U.S. Steel, according to reports yesterday. U.S. Steel shares closed down 17.5% on the news. The United Steelworkers Union opposes it, maintaining the 123-year-old company formed by U.S. business icons, including Andrew Carnegie and J.P. Morgan, should remain a U.S.-owned and operated business. U.S. Steel CEO said yesterday if the deal were blocked, the company may have to close plants, lay off thousands of employees, and move headquarters out of Pittsburgh. If the merger were to go through, the combined company would become the world's third largest steelmaker with 86 million tons of annual capacity. The historic church of the Immaculate Conception in St. Omer, the Pa in the Pau de Calais department of northern France was ravaged by arson on September 2nd. The initial investigation revealed that a 39-year-old individual allegedly broke into the premises, smashing a stained glass window. According to local authorities, the fire spread to the side and central aisles, then the roof and bell tower, which rapidly collapsed. While the images released by the media showed only the metal skeleton of the church steeple, the intervention of the parish priest, Father Sebastian Roussel, enabled the rescue of the Blessed Sacrament and some 20 other religious artifacts, including the reliquary bust of St. Cornel. And Rachel Gunn, the Olympic breaker who went viral for her dance performance at the Paris Games last month, has apologized to the breaking community for the backlash she brought upon it. John, did you happen to catch that? No, I did not. I did not either. I saw headlines and I, I did go finally watch the video. Well, the 37-year-old university lecturer, widely known as Ray Gunn, did not register a single point across her Olympic battles against breakers from the United States, France, and Lithuania in Lithuania across uh, it, last August, losing 18-3 to three in all three rounds. Ew. Her performance consisted of moves including a kangaroo hop, a backward roll, and various contortions with her body while lying or crawling on the floor. Yeah, not great. Well, I, you know, I, not to pile on the, the young lady because apparently she, she won some competition Did to she? get to the Olympics, obviously. But, huh. uh, it, you know, it reminded me of some... Uh, well, let's just say some uh, attempts at dancing at uh, wedding receptions you might see after somebody's yep. made wasn't one too many trips to the yeah. uh, to the to the bar. But yeah, it um, wasn't the best. Anyhow, it was. <laughs> uh, she apologized, and uh, well, that's that. There's always there's always next year. Well, not really. Four years from now, <laughs> she can try again <laughs> in Los Angeles. Let's go to Mark Amadeo for more sports. In sports on your Thursday morning, yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard. All of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Wednesday. 
in Chicago. The Cubs threw their first no-hitter in 52 years as three Cubs pitchers shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of 12 to nothing. Cubs pitchers Shota Imanagua, Nate Pearson, and Porter Hodge combined on a no-hitter for the first time since 1972. The Cubs have thrown a no-hitter at Wrigley Field. In the American League in Kansas City, the Royals defeated first place Cleveland by the score of 4-1. to one. And in Tampa, Florida, the Tampa Bay Rays defeated the Minnesota Twins by the score of 9-4. to four. And the Chicago White Sox defeated the Baltimore Orioles by the score of 8-1. to one. Last night, AAA baseball. The Iowa Cubs playing game two of their six-game road trip at the St. Paul Saints. And it was St. Paul defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of 2-1. to one. Tonight, game three of their series, Iowa Cubs at St. Paul. First pitch at 6.30 tonight in St. Paul, Minnesota. Tonight, NFL Thursday night football. Beginning of week one and the opening night in the NFL has the Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. Kickoff at 720 at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The Chiefs are the defending Super Bowl champs. Tomorrow night, week two of the Iowa high school football season here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And it's a Class 5A top two matchup. Number one Valley taking on number two Dowling Catholic. Both teams undefeated at 1-0 on the season. Our pregame coverage begins at 6.30 with kickoff at 7 o'clock from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. Join Matt Mandring, Brian Morris, and me for the broadcast tomorrow night here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And with your Thursday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Aiden, great job again on the forecast last night. The 10th annual Man, Men's Stag event. My goodness, uh, a, a record-setting event in oh, many yeah. regards. Thanks hey. so much. And the weather uh, tomorrow night is going to be amazing. For, uh, for Football Friday. Oh, so, nice. Well, it's, mm-hmm. uh, uh, keep up the great work, sir. Uh, what you. do we have to look forward to today? Weather Today is sponsored by Westgate Dental. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Today, a slight chance of showers with a high near 81. Tonight, mostly clear conditions with a low around 55. And coming up into Friday, sunny skies with a high near 72. Right now in your Des Moines metro, we have 65 degrees, Winterset 64, Ames 62, and Marshalltown and Fairfield 61. And that is your weather update on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Thank you, sir. All right, Mother Teresa today. Yeah, it's kind of a big day. Uh, this is her uh, her feast day that we celebrate. And... Um, I I mean, I think she was the greatest saint of the 20th century. I mean, I, I, I I'll go down to saying that. It's also my daughter's birthday. Is she, it really? It is. Oh, wow. 18 wow. years old today. And uh, she is she's happy to share this day with this the, is a uh, big day. Yeah, this is a big Teresa. day. And I, I am uh, I'm happy to uh, to talk about this day because I, I, I don't know. I mean, when you look at the saints, you look at all of them. You look at the ones in the 20th century. So you think of like, I mean, who do you think of? You think of John Paul II. You think of Maximilian Kolbe. Uh, I mean, there's so many uh, great saints. And, and and we have John Paul II to blame for that. <laughs> I mean, he he's the one that canonized everyone, right? I mean, Mother Teresa was once asked, uh, Mother, how can I be a saint? She said, go to Rome. John Paul II is canonizing everyone. He he canonized more, more saints in 25 years than five centuries of popes before him, okay? So 500 years of popes before John Paul II did not canonize as many saints combined as John Paul II did. He was just picking up the slack. In 25 years. Just picking up the slack. I mean, there was like a a canonization every other day, but he knew the importance of it, okay? He knew why we needed saints and why why we look to the saints is uh is, is it well, i mean it's another one right uh and, and and mother Teresa is one of those that we look to i i don't know i mean for me she's the greatest saint of the 20th century i don't know of another saint that you can look to and, and some may say oh no no it's this person or that person and and i don't know in some ways i think maybe because she's so familiar you know i mean she's so known even to this day to us but I don't know. I mean, centuries are going to look back on this woman and and think I, she she was one of the best. I mean, one of the greatest, I think, in history. All right. So uh, she has a humility list. All right. How to stay humble. You ready for this, Deacon? Yes. Yeah. Ready. All right. Uh, speak 
as little as possible about yourself and keep busy with your own affairs and right. not those of others. Enjoy the rest of the show, John. Goodbye. What do you think about that? <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> she said, avoid, avoid speaking of yourself. Don't interfere in others' affairs. Accept small irritations with good humor. And uh, do not dwell on the faults of others. There you go. That's her recipe for humility. Yeah, I, I get an F. What do you I, think? I get an F on my report card. <laughs> <laughs> for, for. Yeah, it's a way for all of us. All right. Let, let's see how Deacon Randy's doing. Deacon I, I, Randy? I, I bet he rates pretty high. Deacon Randy, you doing okay on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say something about myself, but I'll be quiet. Ah! There you go. There you go. John sets you up for that, so I I, I'm glad you didn't take the bait, Deacon. That, that was, that was yeah. well done. Well done. Deacon Randy Keel is with us right now for the first and or second reading for this Sunday. Oh, first reading. All right. What are we doing? Gonna, I'm gonna tie I'm gonna tie it to Mother Teresa. I love it. If I could do that for yeah. a second. Because also she in her death was very significant to me returning to the church. Really? And sometime I'll sometime I'll share that story yeah. with you. Of what happened there. But the beginning of this verse from Isaiah, it says, Thus says the Lord. Now, when we hear that, it says, Pay attention, folks. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. So I looked into this. This, this whole passage could be taken as, taken as poetry, as metaphor, but I'd like to look at it with some literalness. The Hebrew word that's better translated here say to those whose hearts are frightened, is say to those those ones with racing hearts. Mm. Racing hearts are those who feel the urgency to respond to the reason they are created. Thus their soul needs their soul knows they need to hear the words of the Lord. So basically he say say to those whose hearts know they need to hear the words of the Lord because that is the racing heart that brings us to eternal life. That's, and that literally is every soul on earth. Yeah. Every soul knows, I'm, hurt, I'm hurting, I'm awaiting to hear the word of the Lord, but the human experience, the human body, and different parts of the mind are interfering. They're irritants. They're interfering with the process of the Lord transcending to that soul, and that soul allowed to hear the voice of the Lord. So that's what it's saying. But, but be strong. Fear not. Here's your God. He comes with vindication in his strength, with divine recompense. He's going to set everything right, and he's going to save you. He's going to save you. So this is a message going back to the, back to the, uh, back to the Hebrews in their exile, and this is a message also of prophecy for the future of Christ coming, because he comes to set the mute tongues free, the ears to be able to hear the lame, to be able to walk. In other words, he's coming to give the whole of the person the ability for that racing heart to have full life inside of that, whether that is here on this earth or that's in eternal life, because the streams will burst forth in the desert, the rivers will flow in the steppe. It makes me think of the steppe farming out by Council Bluffs, mm. and the burning sands will become like pools. The earth itself has a burning heart because the earth, all of nature is alive. It also is part of, according to the Hebrew language, it is also part of those with frightened hearts. It is the soul of the earth. It has a racing heart. It is awaiting to hear the voice of the Lord for the fullness of life that it gives also. Beautiful passage from Isaiah. It really is. My goodness. And as you said, a nice, uh, nice passage for today, especially on this yes. feast of uh, Mother Teresa. Beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. Deacon Randy, would you pray with us? I pray, Lord, that the hearts inside of all of us would see that the movement of our heart, the racing of our heart, is a yearning to hear your word, to see you in all that we see, to hear you in all that we hear, and to know you in all that we know. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Deacon Randy, God bless you, Deacon. Thank you. You too, John. Thank all you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Coming up right after this. Father P.J. McManus is going to be on. We'll uh, be talking about the, uh, uh, well, we, we have two questions today, just two. And one of those is going to be on the church councils. So why do we have church councils uh, really is, is a question all on its own. But what's one of the more important ones? Or is there a more important church council? We'll have uh, that for you coming up 
when we come back. Don't go anywhere. John Linetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951 with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Dino Storage, 2725 2nd Avenue in Des Moines, offering monthly rentals, indoor climate-controlled storage, and package delivery to your unit. Learn more at dinostorage.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Iowa Catholic Radio would like to thank our business partner, Gold Dome Buildings. Gold Dome is locally owned and operated, serving Des Moines and surrounding areas since 1992. Builders of garages, farm buildings, customized backyard sheds and playhouses. GoldDomeIowa.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus, Borman, and Pfeiffer Agency. Serving the Catholic families in Iowa, the Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families. Specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. You can reach Knights of Columbus field agent Gregory Waddle at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. The holiest man in the world on himself. The things you have heard about me are all true. The fact that I spent three years of my youth training to be an astronaut matador before my conversion. That I chose marriage over the ministry because I felt I needed an extra dose of humility. And that I once taught a horse Gregorian chant. Each person has a unique path to holiness. But the call is universal. What's yours? Stay holy, my friends. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hopefully you had a great night last night at the for, for all you men. At the uh, stag, I know I did, and uh, many of you. It was so good to talk to you, catch up. Thanks for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio as well. Some of you may uh, may be listening for the first time, too. You know, we always get uh, first timers after events like that. Welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for again for your support for for everyone that put last night on. What an unbelievable evening! Awesome stuff. All right, let's go to Father PJ right now. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Johnny. All uh, right, we've got two questions for you. Uh, just two this morning because they might they might be a little longer than, uh, or the answers might be a little longer. I will, well, I will try and restrain myself. No, that's okay. I, I, I like the uh, I like I like where you normally go. So let's go with the first one. Is there a church council that's more important than the others, Father? So that <laughs> probably depends on uh, on on who you're asking and the context yeah. in which the question is coming. Like, I, you, so 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 first of all, what's the council? Um, so the, 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 the councils are the, the ordinary way that the church governs itself beyond a local diocese, right? Mm. So the bishop is the head, the high priest of a local diocese, um, and, uh, and he stands in the person of Christ for uh, that local church. He is, it isn't only the pope who's called vicar of Christ, but the, the, the local bishop is, importantly, Christ's vicar for that local church, mm. which places a terrific degree of responsibility on him, but also... Uh, command a terrific degree of deference and respect from those of us yes. who are the Christians that belong to the church that he oversees, right? Um, but, obviously, the church is bigger than any one individual local church, local diocese. And so, so the, way that we, uh, the way the church governs itself then is by gathering bishops in council. Most of the time, for most of history, those councils are very local, right? So it would be like like when the four bishops of Iowa get together, that's not usually called the council, but that would be the idea, right? Yeah. Like the, 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 the bishops of a local place get together. Slightly bigger thing would be something like what we think of today with 
the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. They get together a couple times a year to talk about things. Those aren't proper councils, but they're getting a lot closer to the kind of thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then periodically, when there are matters of real importance that demands a unified voice from everybody, then you might have something like a national council or, or a regional council or something like that. But when we talk about councils, we're usually talking about what are known as ecumenical councils. And that means councils of, of the whole church. So it doesn't mean that every bishop from every diocese in the whole church is all together. That would be practically impossible, um, even in the best of situations. But that you would have representatives from as many places as is possible, so that as many voices are heard, and so that the bishops are able to speak with one voice, uh, uh, together with the Holy Father, about matters of, of, of great import. The model for this we really get from the New Testament itself. This is how the apostles settled the question of, uh, uh, of Gentile converts in, um, in the Acts of the Apostles, right? Um, so so this, is, this, is, this is... And, 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 that, and that gathering is often now called the Council of Jerusalem. Um, uh, it's not an ecumenical council in quite the way that we imagine later, but it is, it's the prototype. It's mm -hmm. the one that gives us the model for how the rest are going to work. So the first one that, that we... So you, you asked what's most important. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the no-brainer here, right, is Nicaea. Um, that's what gives us the creed that we're still reciting today. It's yeah. the one that really formalizes not only the creed, but an awful lot of, um, of uh, sort of the... the ritual prescriptions and a lot of stuff that we would just recognize as, like, default Catholic-y things really come from the Council of Nicaea. Um, just this morning, I was putting together uh, my presentation for the adult ed thing I do on Thursday mornings, because yeah. <laughs> there's nothing like waiting to the last minute to put your lesson <laughs> plan together, teacher. Um, and, uh, and, and even the pattern of bows, uh, prostrations, and, and signs of the cross that, uh, that we use um, ultimately go back uh, to, to Nicaea, right? So this, this, that, that's kind of the, you know, the, the, the first thing is often the, the, the most meaningful because it sets the pattern for the rest, right? Yeah. Um, but in our day, of course, the council that, that has the most immediate impact would be uh, Vatican II because it's the last one that happens, and there's still people running around that were there. Um, and it's the last time the bishops spoke collectively together in, in, in that sort of a way. I think for our people, one of the most important things to understand is that what councils um, typically produce are creeds and catechisms. So the Nicene Creed comes from the Council of Nicaea, and it was to answer very clearly the question of Christ's dual divinity and humanity, and the subsequent councils, uh, which sort of expanded the creed, um, were meant to clarify that. Um, uh, the Second Council of Nicaea is also very important. That's, uh, that, that's what, what makes clear the appropriate use of images, and that images are absolutely, they're not optional. Use of images is an essential part of Christian worship, is an expression of our belief in the Incarnation. Um, but uh, but um, Vatican II is very, very important because it's the teaching of Vatican II that produces what we think of today as the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Now, someday, probably a couple hundred years from now, there will be another council, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church will be whatever catechism is written after that, and the thing that we talk about now will be known as the Catechism of Vatican II, in the same way that what we now call the Catechism of the Council of Trent used to just be called the Catechism of the Catholic Church or the mm -hmm. Roman Catechism. So, so what councils do is, is, is they clarify teaching, um, they allow the Church to speak with one voice, and they, um, and they, and they really direct uh, sort of Church behavior. Do they change Church teaching? Change wouldn't be the right word. What, yeah. they, what, 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 they, what they often do is uh, uh, clarify or, or reformulate. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the word change is hard in this kind of a context because what change, at least not in the sense of reversal. So here's mm -hmm. a good example. Um, people will often say that Vatican II didn't say anything dogmatic or doctrinal. That's not true. I, the people that say that, I think, haven't actually read the documents of the Council. Um, one of the things that Vatican II says very clearly, which had not been said very clearly before, but had been said, just not very clearly, or was implied, but was not very clear, was that bishops are part of the sacrament of holy orders. So it, 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 it was commonly thought before this that, um, that the three grades of orders were subdeacon, deacon, and priest. 
And what Vatican II made clear was, no, it's bishop, priest, and deacon, Mm -hmm. um, that subdeacons are important, um, though we don't tend to use them anymore in our part of the Church, Um, but uh, but, 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 but that, that bishops have a an exercise of authority that's their own. What people, what, what, what theologians often talked about before was that bishops were basically priests with more jurisdiction. So just like a regular parish priest has jurisdiction over his parish, but he can't, like, go around and meddle in somebody else's parish, that a bishop was basically a priest with jurisdiction over the whole diocese. And Vatican II made real clear, that's not the case. Like, like bishops are their own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's part of the reason the language around the ceremony that makes a new bishop shifted from consecration to ordination. Now, both are perfectly fine words, and both articulate what's going on, but the, but the use of the word ordination was written into the books to clarify that we think that the guy is being ordered in a different way. Mm. Now, that doesn't unsay anything that was done before. It just makes clear something that was not very clear. Make that, sense? That makes it clear. Absolutely. <laughs> Father PJ, well, I, am not a, I am not a counsel to myself. No, that's good. That's good. That that uh, that that answers some questions I had. Uh, predestination is the next question. What is it, and does the Catholic Church believe in it? So, predestination is extraordinarily complicated as a topic. The short answer is yes, though probably not in the way that most people are thinking. Yeah. And the reason for that is that most of uh, most of English language use of the word predestination has been um, done and determined by uh, by Protestants, and specifically by Calvinist Protestants. And what most people mean by predestination when they use it, whether it's with, by intention or not, is what's commonly referred to as double predestination, which, uh, w- which is where God's foreknowledge determines somebody else's activity. Mm. So it's, it's, it's something like this. Um, your kid has uh, an habitual misbehavior, right? Mm-hmm. So, so, so Joseph always does something, and, 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 and you can know with a reasonable degree of certainty if he's put in this situation, he's going to do it, right? Yeah. And, um, it, and, and you don't stop putting him in the situation because you want him to learn to grow from this and like, stop doing the thing on his own. You don't want to just constrain his behavior. But you're not actually causing the bad behavior. You're simply permitting it to occur, mm-hmm. right? Well, that's, that's it's, this is a limping analogy, but that's something very close to how God's foreknowledge works. So, so it is, of course, true that because God knows all things and is present everywhere at all times, that, uh, that God exists outside of time, that God has knowledge of what are to us future events, because they're not really future events for him. They're, they're contemporaneous or simultaneous events, right? Mm-hmm. Because everything's happening all at the same time for, for God. Um, but that doesn't cause the behavior on our part, because he doesn't constrain our will. Otherwise, our acts wouldn't be truly free, and we wouldn't be able to genuinely consent or cooperate with his grace. But his, his knowledge of that isn't what causes the effect. He simply has an awareness of it and chooses uh, to, to permit the freedom necessary for us to do what it is we will as free creatures to do. The, the typical uh, Protestant, and I want to be real clear about this, like this is not... This is not most mainline Protestants today, but it is traditional Calvinists, and that would affect a lot of evangelicals today. Um, uh, it would be this double predestination, which is where God predetermines beforehand all of our activity, and therefore who's going to heaven and who's going to hell, which means that some people are predestined for hell. That's the double part of predestination. Mm-hmm. So some people are predestined for hell from before all time. So God really has created some people just to be damned. Um, and, and the Catholic Church doesn't teach that and has never taught anything quite like that. The particular nuances of how it, the timepiece work, the Church allows a great degree of latitude on. Um, and, and, and the way that grace operates in there is a, an historic debate between uh, Dominicans and Jesuits specifically. Um, but, uh, but, but what everybody sort of involved in this conversation agrees on is that there aren't things that God doesn't know so it's not like God's confused about what I'm going to have for breakfast this morning, or what I'm going to preach on at the academy, or what I'm going to say at my, at my adult ed thing. But he's not determining what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. I really am genuinely doing that work myself. I, as you said, it's complicated. I mean, it is so, such a complicated topic. I remember learning about this at Loris, you know, in philosophy, and, uh, and still 
you know, uh, struggling to kind of wrap my, my, uh, my mind around all of it. But, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. There'll be, there'll be more questions, I'm sure, that will come about from it. In the meantime, would you give us your blessing? Sure, sure, sure. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Hey, good luck this morning. We'll get Appreciate them. it. Come down right. to see us. All right. Take care. Father P.J. McManus, everyone. Pastor of Christ the King, you can always go down in uh, every Thursday. He has a uh, little catechism session, as uh, as he just mentioned. And uh, if I know Father PJ, and I do, it's it's good. Yeah, yeah he normally does a uh, great job at everything that he does. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. All right, we'll have your Dowling Catholic Spotlight coming up in the second half hour. Let's go right now to Father with today's Gospel and Reflection. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats, so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. Today we have the beautiful call story of Simon Peter, along with James and John, as Jesus calls them from mending nets, from fishing for fish, in order to catch men. Jesus uses ordinary images, ordinary human experiences and interests in order to attract people to him, to in order to attract people to accepting the kingdom of God. That is to say, in this case, he uses the image of fishing in order to catch Peter, to catch James and John, in order to make them his apostles. The Lord has given each and every one of you your personality, your interests, your set of talents and gifts in order to win people for Christ. Perhaps he's going to ask you to win others for Christ through your interest in sport, in music, in some kind of academic pursuit, in some other sort of hobby. No domain of life is absent the presence of Christ if we are willing to put our gifts at his disposal. So let us put out into the deep and keep praying for one another this day and always, and may God bless you. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, this is Sister Mary of the Visitation from the Servants of the Lord and the Virgin of Matara. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com At Intervisions Healthcare, we see patients with unplanned pregnancies from ages 12 to 43. An unplanned pregnancy is traumatic at any age. For that reason, we specialize in educating, encouraging, and empowering vulnerable and at-risk mothers facing an unexpected pregnancy with the medical information and services necessary for them to make an informed decision. For more information on the free medical services at Intervisions Healthcare or to support our mission or become a volunteer, visit IVHcare.org. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Des Moines Symphony. The symphony's 87th season begins with a performance of Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, featuring internationally renowned pianist Olga Kern. The concert will be bookended by Kevin Day's Lightspeed and Bruckner's Majestic Symphony No. 7. Don't miss the Des Moines Symphony's season debut, The Emperor, Saturday, September 28th and Sunday, September 29th at the Civic Center. dmsymphony.org. Thanks to the Des Moines Symphony for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from John Leonetti, EOS Implementer, the entrepreneurial operating system, helping businesses and organizations clarify, simplify, and achieve their vision. John.Leonetti at EOSWorldwide.com. Christ Our Life, a Catholic conference for our searching souls. Come celebrate your Catholic faith where lives are changed. Speaker at the Christ Our Life conference, Jason Everett. How we can respond as Catholics to gender, uh, that delicate issue. If you've got family, friends, you know, who identify as trans or non-binary, you know, what's the Catholic response to that? September 28th and 29th at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Details and ticket info at ChristOurLifeIowa.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning, everybody. Thursday, September 5th, the feast of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about her coming up here in just a few minutes. Also, your Dowling Catholic Spotlight's going to be on. Uh, We'll have that for you coming up here at 745. All right. Deacon Mark, let's pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Back to Deacon Mark now with your news. Thank you, John. The Iowa Catholic Radio News this morning, brought to you by Fast Signs in Clive. Learn more at fastsigns.com. The Episcopal Conference of Venezuela rejected on Tuesday the political use of Christmas carried out by socialist dictator Nicolas Madero, who once again rescheduled the start of Christmas in Venezuela to benefit his agenda. On Monday, Madero, during the latest broadcast of his weekly television show, announced that he was moving the start of Christmas to October 1st. The socialist dictator claimed the decision to move Christmas was to express his gratitude to Venezuelans in the aftermath of the July 28th presidential election which Madero and the Venezuelan institutions under his control fraudulently insist he won. Mm. The Venezuelan bishops recalled that Christmas begins December 25th and ends on January 6th with the Epiphany of the Lord, also reaffirming that Christmas is a time of reflection, peace, and love and must be respected as such. How about that, John? Just... You know, we can kind of move in it. We, we kind of, you know, here here in America, we just, you know, Christmas decorations are in Menards by, yeah. uh, by, by, by October now. 1st. But, but yeah, right. we don't just declare that, hey, you know what? It's Christmas. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Valentine's uh, Day. Pe- pe- people are, people are interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we need a savior. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> we need, we need, <laughs> we need a savior. The chairman of the Iowa GOP says the party will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a voter turnout effort this year. Jeff Kaufman says getting Republicans to vote before Election Day is the priority. Kaufman says once an Iowa Republican votes early, the party will no longer call or send them reminders in the mail or pay people to knock on their door to ask about their voting plan. Democrats have embraced early voting for years. In 2022, Democrats held a significant edge in early voting. Iowans can submit absentee ballot request forms to their county auditor now, and county auditors may start sending ballots to voters on October 16th, the early voting period in Iowa. Used to be 40 days before the election, but Republican lawmakers have taken steps to reduce the early voting window to just 20 days. Absentee ballots must be in the county auditor's office by 8 p.m. on Election Day. There you go. Let's go to Mark Amadeo for a look at sports. And sports on your Thursday morning. Yesterday's Major League Baseball scoreboard. All of the Midwest Major League Baseball teams were in action on Wednesday. In Chicago, the Cubs threw their first no-hitter in 52 years as three Cubs pitchers shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of 12 to nothing. Cubs pitchers Shota Imanagua, Nate Pearson, and Porter Hodge combined on a no-hitter for the first time since 1972. The Cubs have thrown a no-hitter at Wrigley Field. In the American League in Kansas City, the Royals defeated first place Cleveland by the score of 4 to 1. And in Tampa, Florida, the Tampa Bay Rays defeated the Minnesota Twins by the score of 9-4. And the Chicago White Sox defeated the Baltimore Orioles by the score of 8-1. 
Last night, Triple A baseball. The Iowa Cubs playing game two of their six game road trip at the St. Paul Saints. And it was St. Paul defeating the Iowa Cubs by the score of two to one. Tonight, game three of their series, Iowa Cubs at St. Paul. First pitch at 6 30 tonight in St. Paul, Minnesota. Tonight, NFL Thursday night football. Beginning of week one and the opening night in the NFL has the Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. Kickoff at 720 at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The Chiefs are the defending Super Bowl champs. Tomorrow night, week two of the Iowa high school football season here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And it's a Class 5A top two matchup. Number one Valley taking on number two Dowling Catholic. Both teams undefeated at 1-0 on the season. Our pregame coverage begins at 6.30 with kickoff at 7 o'clock from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. Join Matt Mandring, Brian Morris, and me for the broadcast tomorrow night here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And with your Thursday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And let's go to Aid now for a quick look at our forecast for today. Thank you so much, Deacon Mark. Weather today is sponsored by Westgate Dental. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Today, a slight chance of showers with a high near 81. Tonight, mostly clear conditions with a low around 55. And coming up into Friday, sunny skies with a high near 72. Right now near Des Moines Metro, we have 65 degrees, Winterset 65, AIM 64, Marshalltown and Fairfield 62 degrees. And that is your weather update on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Thank you, Aiden. Let's go to your Saint of the Day. This is your Saint of the Day on Iowa Catholic Radio. Well, she reminded us that those cast aside or forgotten wear the face of Jesus. She found them and served them. St. Teresa of Calcutta today better known as Mother Teresa, was born in what is now Macedonia. She she entered the Sisters of Loretto in Ireland and was assigned to teach in the Loretto School in India. While there, she took note of the great poverty and destitution around her. While riding on a train, Teresa heard what she later explained as a call within a call. Those are quotes around that. A call within a call, she would call it to leave the Sisters of Loretto and serve Christ in the distressing disguise among the poorest of the poor. Now, there's so much here. That that permission was not granted right away, but it eventually was granted to her. It, it was tough for her to get that. They didn't want her to leave. She founded the new community, though, the Missionaries of Charity. She took a nursing course of several months and opened a school in Calcutta for poor children. In 1952, the city of Calcutta gave Teresa a formal hostel, which became her home for the dying and destitute. As the order grew over the next four decades, services expanded to orphans, abandoned children, alcoholics, the aging, and street people. Mother Teresa's mission took on a new phase in 1979, when she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She began to crisscross the globe pleading for support and inviting others to see the face of Jesus in the poorest of the poor. She died in 1997 and was canonized in 2016. She's, in my estim- my belief, she's the greatest saint of the 20th century. We ask today, St. Teresa of Calcutta, to pray for us. Amen. They didn't want her to leave, by the way. You know, I and... and you know, I know sometimes we can kind of gloss over situations like that. Like, oh, you know, she eventually founded the Missionaries of Charity as a sister of Loretto. It, it didn't work just smooth, right? I mean, no one wanted her to leave the order. Uh, it took, I, I think it was upwards of two years for her to actually end up getting the permission to be able to do such a thing. It started a religious order. And you could imagine, right? I mean, the order itself didn't want her to leave, you know. Uh, she was so talented in, in in every aspect there, but but in a lot of ways, you know, the church is um, is careful to start religious orders like this, you know, and, and for people to leave and just kind of start something new, you know, the church will will pump the brakes for quite a while and say, well, wait a second here, let's make sure this is of God. Well, she discerned it, and uh, yeah, it was of God. We look now to 130 countries that house her religious sisters. I think it's over 130 now. It's the largest and fastest growing religious order in the world. The fastest growing religious order 
of all the religious, you think of Franciscans, Dominicans, Jesuits, all of them. It's the fat, her order, the missionaries of charity are the fastest growing order in the world. It's awesome. I could go on for days, days, probably months when it comes to this woman. Just an unbelievable woman. All right, when we come back, we'll have your Dowling Catholic Spotlight for us. Uh, Grace Fry, Juju Morrow, both seniors are going to be on uh, to talk about the Dowling Catholic Activity Spotlight. We'll uh, have that for you. They're tennis players. When we come back, don't go anywhere. John Linetti here on the Catholic Morning Show. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Here's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines this Thursday, September 5th. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Happy anniversary on your priestly ordination, Father Julius Inamid. Father Julius serves parishes in Neola and Weston on the west side of our diocese. The Catholic Beer Club is a gathering of young adults who love Catholicism, beer, and good conversation, all in moderation. Stop by Mullets in Ankeny today at 7 o'clock and see for yourself. This Sunday, we have a Mass for healing and remembrance of those who died by suicide. Join us at the 11 o'clock Mass at St. Ambrose Cathedral. Also Sunday, All Saints Church in Stewart is hosting a concert featuring Daniel Oberruder. Stop by the church at 7 o'clock and journey with the singer-songwriter through the mysteries of the rosary. The concert begins fun and upbeat, and as it progresses, Daniel takes listeners through stories and images that challenge us to a greater conversion of heart. That's this Sunday at 7 o'clock at All Saints in Stewart. That's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. I'm Anne-Marie Cox. At noon, Monday through Friday, the doctor is in. Dr. Ray Garendi helps you with personal problems and professional questions. You'll love his fun approach and practical advice. The doctor is in on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Connecting listeners to Christ. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. The next Man Up West Power Lunch is Friday, September 13th at St. Francis of Assisi in West Des Moines. Hear from attendees of the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis and the call to be Eucharistic missionaries. The program begins at noon and lunch will be provided. Register at iowacatholicradio.com. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. That's smart. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Thanks for joining me today, friends. Thursday, September 5th. We're talking about the Iowa Iowa State uh, matchup that's going to be taking place this uh, this Saturday. Uh, it, yeah, two days from now. All right. Let's go to our next guest. Uh, two of them. Grace Fry, Juju Morrow. Both seniors at Dowling Catholic for our Dowling Catholic Activity Spotlight. And the uh, Iowa Catholic Radio Network presents a Dowling Catholic High School Activity Spotlight, monthly spotlight on a member of Dowling Catholic High School members community that is a witness to the very best of faith, academics, and student activities. Sponsored by Brightside uh, uh, Athletics uh, by Ducharme Dermatology in Clive. Excuse me, Brightside Aesthetics. I'm reading athletics at the top and everything. All right. Uh, tennis, both of you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. First place? Yeah. You know, I was a uh, I was a tennis player. How Dallas. serious? Yeah. yeah. University? No, I was. Uh, varsity uh, doubles. Um, I was 300 pounds in high school, so I was very large. And... <laughs> And you, you, when when people would see me playing tennis, they would kind of laugh because they would think, "Oh, this guy can't move." I was quick. I was quick. Yeah. I know it's hard it's hard to believe for both of you, <laughs> but uh, you both won first place state doubles champions. That's awesome. Who'd yeah. you beat? We beat Johnston in the final. Were they good? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys must be really good. Were you Were you like ranked? Throughout the year, or how'd that work? Yeah, we were ranked number one. Number, number one all the way. Yep, mm-hmm. undefeated. So do both of you play singles then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We play singles and doubles during regular season, and then we chose to play doubles during postseason. So you can choose to play singles or doubles? Yeah. Okay. That's where it confuses people. Yeah. It's called individual state. Right. So then they're like, wait, it's individual state, but you're playing doubles. And so like, you can't yes. play both? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Okay. So you guys decided, to, um, and you went sixth place last year? Mm-hmm. Right. So how do you go from sixth place to first place? That's awesome. 
a lot of time and work. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you both work together on this? I mean, how's that work? Yeah. We, I mean, we've always played with each other a little bit yeah. ever since we were freshmen, but I don't know. We haven't started playing with each other since, what, sophomore year? Mm-hmm. So That would be tough, right? I mean, I would think singles, I mean, you, you kind of own your, your, your half of the court, right? But now you got doubles and now you're relying on someone else. That's not, it's not easy. Yeah, I kind of like it a little bit more. Yeah. It, it, it takes the pressure fun. off. You guys sure. yell at each other? No, no. we yell, oh, come we yell on. for each other. We're, yeah. Yeah, we're really hype. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta, you, you guys are intense, right? Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're playing. Um, did you ever almost lose to Johnson or anyone else? Or mm-hmm. was I it mean, close? Yeah, we, so we lost the first set. And to Johnson. Yes. Okay. And then we won the second set. Okay. And then, so when you split sets, you have to play another one. Right. And then we won the final set. So we had to play three whole sets. So what are you thinking after the first set? Mm. We were like, <laughs> oh no. Were they good? Um, really good? They were good. I think we it was more of an us problem. Like yeah. We were just kind of not doing our best that day. And we were like, we know we can do better. Like, let's go into the second set and just like show them who we are. You and know? you did. Yeah, and we huh. did. That's, that's the way to yeah. do it. All right. Doubles champion. So what do you get? Do you get like a, a, a trophy? What do you get? We like got a lot. We got yeah? all sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. Do you get your, well. your picture at Dowling Catholic now? No. No? Sadly. No? Oh, right next to on. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. <laughs> is she up there somewhere? She is. Is she? She has a plaque by the gym. Does she? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is she in the uh, Hall of Fame yet? I mean, uh, I yeah. Know. Yeah. She, yeah. She yeah. She's been inducted. Of course she has. I haven't. But that's all right. No, it, no one cared about my doubles uh, claim. I didn't win state champion, though. All right. Uh, both of you are also active at Dowling Catholic. Faith as well is important to both of you. You, you both don't know where you're, you're going to Iowa, right? Yeah. You are Juju? Yep. Okay. And uh, we talked about that. Not Iowa State? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> can't, can't convince you? Mm-mm. All right. All right. She's going to Iowa. Uh, are you going to play tennis there? Uh, I'll play club tennis up there. What's that? It's... So it's not like a, it's more, so I'm not getting a scholarship from Iowa to play tennis. It's more like an activity where like okay. everyone can go and play. All right. And uh, Grace, you're yes. going to play tennis? Um, I don't think so. I'm going to go to college for academics yeah. and I'll definitely do club tennis. Both of you won but... state champion. <laughs> you're the state champions. You're not going to play, compete in this? No, no? I guess it's kind of crazy. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 People are like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, that's all right. Um, I, I, I get it. Uh, Kairos, Grace, you said uh, you went on Kairos last year. Was good for your faith? Yeah, it was yeah. really great for my faith. It was the jump start I think that I needed. I didn't even realize that I needed it necessarily until after I went, but I met a lot of close friends through that, and it definitely jump started my faith journey. That's awesome. Sure. And uh, uh, Juju, you went to Kairos as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, important for you? Very. Yeah. I think it just really put a lot of things in perspective for me. So people that have influenced your faith, as we talk about our Dowling Catholic spotlight here and just activities and sports and all that, but uh, both of you women are, uh, are, are really, um, uh, you, you hold faith important. Who influenced your faith the most, Grace? Um, for me, it's definitely my dad and my grandparents. I'm nice. a cradle Catholic, so just like growing up under their influence, I've definitely seen what it looks like to be strong in the faith and kind of just always known that that was something that I should be having as well as a strong relationship with God. Are they all listening? Um, I hope oh, so. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I told them about it. Good so. job, Dad. Good job, Grandma and Grandpa. Right? <laughs> uh, and uh, Juju, you said uh, it was it was Kairos that uh, that helped you small groups, but also your grandparents as well. Yeah, uh, I would say my grandparents because they really pushed my parents to be strong Catholics, and then my parents pushed me to be strong Catholics of nice. going to mass every Sunday. So that's important. All right, future plans. What are you guys doing? What are you going to do with your life? You got to know. You're seniors in high school. You have to know what you're doing with your life, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping to go to a good school. Yeah. Um, looking at Notre Dame. That Notre would be Dame? Awesome. Are I you mean, kidding me? I mean, I got to apply and like get Look in. But you. the faith there is amazing. So that's the goal. And then I want to be a pediatrician. I've nice. known that for kind of a long time. So do you, um, uh, uh, you have good grades? Um, yeah, I think so. You better. <laughs> yes, have you to do. Do. She does. Yeah. Day. Are you number one in the class? Um, they don't do rank really. They don't? don't? They do like top 3%. And Wait. I'm top 3%. Wait a second. <laughs> we don't rank anymore? No. no. Why? There's no valedictorian at Dowling. I don't know why. Oh, stop that. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. You get what? a cord for top 3%. What? Yeah. Are you going to get people in trouble saying that? 
Well, I sure hope not. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble saying this. Come on. I was like 250 out of 300. Is that bad? I don't, I don't know. It's not yeah. 300. Yeah, I, so. wasn't, I wasn't very good. How I, big was I, your class? I, like 300, 350 maybe. I, it was something like that. But uh, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't very smart. So I would have appreciated no rankings back then. I remember <laughs> hearing my ranking. I was like, oh, that's terrible. Um, but, you know, that's the way it works. All right. Uh, both of you, uh, what? I was just waving at Elise walking by. Oh. I also want to just point out, John, you oh, you, you have totally failed the uh, what I do. segment on uh, uh, St. Mother Teresa's not talking about yourself. Yeah. yeah Man, I, it's a, I you, talked about in, myself in, here. In, in your ranking in, uh, in, in well tennis and listen, academics. Listen, I was a 300-pound varsity tennis player. That will stay with me for my life. Um, I was 250 These girls in my champions, class. champions, and that will stay with them for the rest of their life. Yeah, they're like top 3% <laughs> in their class, too. And that, and they're me. amazing. All Beautiful right. inside and out. Amazing. Um, this was a uh, this was a different interview than I than I thought it was going to be. But both of you are fantastic, and you keep up the great work. You hear me? So uh, with 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 tennis, it's all done. Everything's over. Right now, we're moving on. College. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. going to repeat. Right? Got, you get yeah. a chance to repeat. When is yeah. when is it? In the spring. Wait, it's you just... guys wanted as juniors? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thanks for showing up today, John. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I have notes here, but these notes are are they're great. great. They're, they're great. They're great. Wonderful notes. Yeah, it's so all good. You're going to repeat again this this uh, spring. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, plan. Uh, who's uh, are you guys going in rank number one? Should be. Yeah. 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 Tell them who's That's right. Who's good? Who's who are you going to face? Um, Northwest will be good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's really all. Northwest I know. is that yeah. Ankeny or Waukee? Uh, Waukee Northwest. Waukee Northwest. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, go win. Yeah. All right. Don't fail us. <laughs> All right. We'll be back on here. The <laughs> pressure <laughs> is yeah, that's on. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace and Juju are going to come back <laughs> after you win first place again, doubles champion, and then you're going to play club tennis at Notre Dame in Iowa, and uh, get great grades there. All right. Then they come back and they're going to serve our uh, community right and here. Juju's in Juju's going to be an orthodontist. Right. Is that what I have here? Yep. Yeah. And uh, Grace, you said you're going to be a pre-med? Yeah, yeah. pediatrician. Hopefully. You're both very smart. You have a lot going for you in the uh, in the years ahead, way more than I did. All right, you could become a radio host. I mean, who knows? <laughs> uh, that is Juju Morrow and Grace Fry, seniors at Dowling Catholic, going for their second championship, doubles championship for the year. Great job. Both Thanks for you. joining us, ladies. We will close with prayer. Yeah. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm John Leonetti. Be confident in Christ's mercy and his love today. The Catholic Morning Show is a production of the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. To hear this and other programs, visit iowacatholicradio.com or download the Iowa Catholic Radio app.